Hey you guys, Sean with Go Gloves here, and in today's video, I'll be showing you the right way to break in your baseball glove. Damn, got it. So the first thing that you do when you get your brand new baseball glove is you need to break it in and get it in that game ready form. And there's a lot of different ways to break in your baseball glove and today I'll be showing you the correct way to break in your baseball glove. So it's not necessarily going to be the fastest method, but it is going to be the best in terms of taking care of your glove and helping with the longevity of the leather. So before I get into my method of breaking in a baseball glove, I'm going to tell you the reasons why the other methods are not as good and how they can damage your glove. So most sporting goods stores, when you buy a baseball glove, they'll offer to break in your glove in a steamer. So when you put your glove into a steamer, the glove is actually broken in all at once and at every part of the glove. And what's going to happen when that occurs is your glove is going to become a lot floppier because the backside of the glove where the ball isn't touching is actually supposed to be stiff so the glove does not become floppy and get pancaked over time. Also, if you look in your sporting goods stores, if there's a steamer, alongside of it is going to be a pounding pad. And this is where they break in the glove with a mallet. However, after the employee puts the glove in the steamer and they put it on the pounding pad, you'll notice that there's some leather dye that's left on the pounding pad. So when the steam gets into the leather, it will actually take off some of that dye and it will get rubbed off onto the pounding pad and that is not what you want. Depending on how much leather actually gets taken out of the glove, it will severely make your glove fade a lot quicker and you don't want that especially if you have a colored glove compared to a more neutral tan glove. A few other common break-in processes that I would not recommend are heating up your glove in an oven or microwave. That's definitely going to ruin the leather. Um, I would also not recommend putting any oils or substances on your glove when you break it in just because that will weigh down your glove and it doesn't need to be conditioned because most gloves are oiled or conditioned out of the factory. The last process I definitely don't recommend because I've seen it firsthand is running over your glove. So this is gonna ruin the leather, especially if you don't pat it with a towel or another form of padding. Also, it is going to be a lot harder to fold that into your hand because it's not breaking in the crease points of where the leather is actually going to fold. So here with me is a glove that I've broken in myself from a new attack condition to the broken in condition that it's in now. And the first thing that you want to know when you break in a glove is how you're gonna use that glove, what hand position you're gonna have and how you like the pocket to be and other things like that. Okay, so the first really big thing to take into account is how big the pocket needs to be or how big you want it to be. Once you have that in mind, that's definitely gonna vary how the glove closes. So most people with a shallower pocket are gonna have the thumb part of the glove close into where the ring finger or the middle finger is. Now for me, I prefer a deeper pocket and I also go two fingers in the pinky slot of the glove for an easier close. Because of that, I try to go as much as the thumb to pinky close as possible, which will give you more room in the pocket. Now, the second thing to know about when you want to break in your glove is there's a single hinge or a dual hinge. And that means when your glove closes, it's either gonna break at two points like this one, or at one point, like this one. So this also depends on what kind of pocket size that you want. A dual hinge will definitely give you more room in the pocket, and a single hinge will give you less room in the pocket. Now that you decide on that, now you're going to want to decide what kind of form that you want. So I like a little bit of flare on the thumb with a pretty straight pinky finger. And this isn't going to really matter in the break-in process, but you will want to be forming your gloves while you're breaking it in. Now, when you are curling or flaring the thumb and pinky, you have to know that there's a plastic insert in the glove. So to flare the thumb, you're gonna just want to put your thumb right here and I just like to bend this gradually. And you don't wanna bend it too much because that plastic insert will break. Now, if you break that plastic insert, you can replace it, but if you choose not to, you will find that the ball might hit the thumb or the pinky and still pop out because there's not as much stability. So one of the first things that I like to do when I get my glove is just to turn it upside down like this and break in the heel, which is the part right here that your palm is gonna touch. So there's gonna be some padding in the heel that you can feel, and basically you're just gonna wanna move the glove up and down on both sides, and that's gonna stretch out the fibers in the heel. Now you're probably not gonna notice a huge difference after that and that's okay because you still haven't broken in the palm. And I will say that this process, it is the best for the glove but it is going to take a long time. So if you're in a crunch, I would recommend some other processes. 
All right, so once you get the heel broken in, now you're gonna want to grab a glove mallet. And if you don't have one of these or you don't know what it is, I will show you and it's very easy to make on your own if you don't want to buy one. All right, so these are three glove mallets that I have and they're all different shapes and sizes, but they all do the same thing. If you don't wanna buy one of these because they do range from about 20 to $35, so if you do not want to buy one, they're very easy to make and there's some other YouTube videos out there on how to make one. Okay, so now that you have your glove mallet, what you want to do is to consistently hit the palm area. So you can either keep the glove on your hand or take it off and put it on a flat surface. If you're going to put it on a flat surface, make sure you put some padding down so you don't ruin the leather. So when you do this, you want to keep consistently hitting the palm in about the same area. It's going to stretch these palm fibers out so you don't have creases when you actually break in the break points. Okay, so once you start breaking in the palm and start stretching those fibers, you really want to start those break points. So like I said before, you're going to want to decide between a single or dual hinge. And once you figure that out, you're going to basically close the glove where you'd want it to be like this for me it was a thumb to pinky close so you would get it just like this and then start pounding these break points right here and here okay so now that I've done the break point by the thumb of the glove I'm gonna start doing the one on the pinky side of the glove Okay, now that I have my break points established and my palm fibers stretched out, I'm gonna wanna start developing that pocket. So the easiest way to do this is to actually put the glove on your hand and start hitting the mallet where you want the ball to hit. All right, so once you're done developing the pocket, what you wanna do is just play catch as much as you can with the glove. As soon as a ball can be caught within the glove, start playing catch and simulate that in practice and make sure the ball is hitting right where you want it to be. And make sure while you're playing catch or anytime the glove is on your hand, make sure you're forming the thumb and pinky the way that you like it. These plastic inserts will react, however, it does take a long time for them to adapt to how you like it. If you're having trouble breaking in your glove still, make sure you continue malleting and playing catch with it and just get broken in as you like it. If you have trouble breaking in a glove all the way how you like it, make sure you just keep repeating these processes of using a mallet and playing catch as well as forming your glove. I would say a good break in will take you an hour to two hours of mallet work along with playing catch and forming your glove. My last tip on while you're breaking in your glove, make sure that your hand is the only hand that is in your glove because with other people squeezing your glove, it will definitely change the grip and the break in of your leather. Now, once your glove is broken in, it won't matter as much, but still try to be the only one that keeps your hand in your glove. And make sure while you're carrying your glove, if you keep it in a bag, especially to keep two baseballs or a softball in the pocket so your glove does not become pancaked. If you need help developing the pocket, I would definitely also recommend keeping a softball in the pocket and wrapping it up tightly with a belt or another large strap. Keep it wrapped up tightly for about 24 to 48 hours and you should see a difference in the pocket size. All right, you guys, that is all I have for breaking in a baseball glove the right way. If you enjoyed this video and thought it was helpful, make sure you leave a like and comment down below. If you want to see more videos just like this one every week, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any new uploads. If you want to see some more of my gloves, make sure you follow my Instagram at GoGloves or follow the link in the description down below. Lastly, follow my TikTok for more funny baseball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.